Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I am your host today, Jared Timms, and I am joined alongside my co-hosts, my partners in crime, Nate Green and Brock Davis. Guys, let's start with Brock. Brock, how you doing? Doing good. Good. My busy day. Just got over COVID for the second time, even though I didn't really get sick, but that's basically it. Lucky you. I got sick. It's okay. It happens. I got sick though. A little bit, not really, not horribly. Kind of a weird way to start off the show, but uh, but yeah, Nate, how you doing? I'm great. Still, uh, still haven't got it yet. So, congratulations. We're, we're, Just means we're, we're fighting. We're fighting. That's great. Yeah. So, well, guys, as always, you guys know I like to start this show off with a question of the day. Um, I don't have too much to talk about. I know all three of us played baseball, um, so I need to go. I need us to give our go-to Gatorade. That's kind of an interesting one, I feel like, you know, because there's a lot of good Gatorades out there. Lately, I got, you know, with the uh, blue, zero, zero, is it Gatorade zero? Yep. Yep. That's, that's been my go-to. I do like the white ice, and I, you can't go wrong with the classic lemon lime, is it? The yellow? Yeah. Lemon, whatever you want to call it. So, I think Nate, that's what do you want? Uh, I'll go classic fruit punch, the red one. Nope. Yeah. Yep. I don't drink Gatorade. What do you do? Okay, fine. Body armor. Since I saw you just drinking body armor, what do you I, got? Everything body armor. Lately, I've been drinking the bigger ones, so I've been trying to go for the no sugar added because the bigger ones have like 60 grams of sugar in them. But this one's blueberry pomegranate, and I don't care about the locale. As you can see, I'm pretty skinny, but the sugar is four grams. So this stuff's legit, dude. Body armor, not a sponsor. Right. Not yet. I, I sure Yet. wish they were because I drink these. I spend so much money on these things. Yet. And you just, you're starting to look like Mike Trout, though. Uh, well, once you start drinking it, your facial features just start slowly changing. Is that how that works? That's yeah. cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast here at Talking Halos, making us the best Angels podcast out there. I truly do believe it. Um, if you could, subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening uh, or watching us because, hi, again, YouTube, we're on it um it's a lot of fun i i really like doing this youtube thing i think it's a little bit different um i think we're gonna really kind of get into this youtube thing as we start talking like in-game situations um <laughs> like during the season i think that's gonna be kind of cool to actually talk about that stuff and i don't know but um but yeah for the time being not a lot of baseball news on un- unfortunately but if you could follow us wherever you're listening to this podcast subscribe wherever you're listening or watching like i said youtube um, you can follow myself on Twitter at Jared underscore Tim. You can follow Nate at NateGreen34 and Brock at BDROX8. So, guys, I just wanted to start, I mean, this podcast really off with us giving a correct stat. I know that was kind of a weird thing, and, and, and you know, somebody out there will appreciate a correct stat from us because we may not be giving correct stats. I don't know. I, th- I think we do. I think we do a good job of giving – Solid stats. So my stat of the day is that Mike Trout has a 77.8 Fangraphs war. Pretty solid. I'll say that. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Brock, what do you got? You said you had an interesting one that you saw. Did you find that one? No, I, I didn't. It was a very Bond stat, but I'm just going to keep something. I, I'm going to do some. I feel like it's only fair for this review that it's something I just pulled from my head that I do know that is 110% factual. In the 2002 World Series in Game 5, Adam Kennedy, our second baseman, had three home runs. Not World Series. You didn't say it right. ALC. Oh, oh, dang it. Gosh. Dang oh, it. no. Come up with oh, a new I one. We'll get it. back to you. We'll get back to you. Come up, come, up to a new, come up with another one. You didn't say it right. This is exactly why we need to practice this, guys. You didn't say it right. All right, Nate, give me a stat. Hey, but you knew it, so you would have corrected me in a real yeah. show. So I, that, I feel like that should count. I did. This isn't a practice show, though, either. Well, I, Whatever. <laughs> Nate, give me a stat. All right, I'll go a little bit out there just because I think this guy could end up being an angel. Uh, Elvis Andrews in 105 games in Angel Stadium is a career 293 hitter. Probably. A, you think he's going to be an angel? I, I said it's possible. The A's are going to want to get rid of some money. You might not have to give anything up for him. It's true. It's a career 293 hitter in Angel Stadium. It's not bad. Brock Redemption, <laughs> give me something. <laughs> Why you got to do this to me? What if you do to say Barry Bonds had how many home runs? 
I know he had 73 home runs in 2001. I mean, Fantastic. if you want me to use that. I, ha- I, was, I was building up on a cooler one. Okay, here you go. Here you go. So Adam Kennedy in 2002 had seven home runs in the whole season. He nearly halved that with three in the 2002 Game 5 of the American League Championship Series. Who were they playing? They Points. were playing oh, – you bastard. God, I, I wanted to see it. I'm just kidding. That's good. That's just, good. I, <laughs> I just wanted to have a little bit of fun here, guys. I, um, I mean, you know, I don't know if that person's going to be watching this show or uh, listening to it anymore, but we just wanted to throw out some uh, factual stats for some people out there. I also Probably. know that in 2004, Barry Bonds got on base more, ta- more times than he had played appearances. Yeah, Barry Bonds is impressive. If you go look at some of his stats, it's like – there are certain people you look at their stats. Barry Bonds is one of them. Uh, Mike Trout's another one. Uh, Babe Ruth. Um, I'm sure there's quite a few more. Cy Young. Uh, Nolan Ryan, if you look at like the strikeout totals and such. There are certain guys like that. And it's like unbelievable. Like other sport, but Wayne Gretzky. Has anybody ever looked at Wayne Gretzky's stats? Mm. Unbelievable. Like compared to like other guys, he's scoring like – I think he scored – and this is not – factual because obviously i'm not a hockey guy but he was scoring like 100 goals and having 100 assists in an 82 game season which is like (laughs) video game he put up video legitimate video game numbers which is which is damn impressive so let's get on to a little bit more i guess actual baseball news there's a big meeting yesterday if you're watching this on friday are you Uh, sure it's considered big i don't know i mean how long do they talk for did we get an actual amount of time that they talked for no i didn't see that it didn't sound like it lasted long <laughs> i mean i doubt it lasted very long however it is one of those things you know where we do need to talk about it i feel like there's a lot of you know interesting news that comes along with it um has anybody actually read up on the cba that was proposed nate i know you did a little bit brock did you kind of read up on it see anything at it uh i just saw certain twitter users you know pull certain pieces out of it um that that's pretty much it i don't know are you are you saying there was like an actual like they got a hold of a lot there was something proposed there's a couple things a couple things i've just seen little bits and pieces of what was proposed same thing so the first thing that i want to bring bring to the table here and i don't know if it's the most important thing but it's the first thing that i saw so i wrote it down um bringing down from a free agency from six years to five years um doesn't sound like that's gonna happen I'm actually kind of I'm pro player always um, in this situation, and you know, I think a lot of people should be pro, pro player. Um, and I, I kind of like that. I know the owners will never allow that because you're almost taking away two years, especially if you're doing that super six, super seven type of thing, like the Chris Bryant rule, where you get seven years of him. Um, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I don't think the owners will ever let that happen. But bringing down free agency one year, I personally don't think it's a huge deal i don't know what your guys' thoughts on that are um well they would still be able to get the sixth year they could still figure out a way to get that super super two and make him in there for six years so it would still be about the same yeah uh, so i just think you got to cut i just think you got to cut it at six though like it need like you can't have that super rule anymore like you, you just need to be like well if they're playing before september you know like that needs that's when that deadline is you know I- I mean, that's something you and I have talked about off the record is you give them – if you play in any game before September, it should count as playing a year. And you should only get X amount of years. I, I'm a big proponent of saying you get four years and then you become a um, a restricted free agent, kind of like the NBA does, the NFL does it a little bit, um, NHL does it as well. So everyone has the option to sign him, and the team who owns that guy has the option to – uh, match whatever offers out there. So I think that's something that, that could be brought into play. But, yeah, I, I don't think that's that big of a deal. I think if you're a player, I think it's something maybe you say, we'll give you five, but you got to give us something else where it's, you know, not necessarily something that's huge for the players, but it's something that they could say, okay, we'll, give, we'll, we'll take that as a win, but we also need this, you know. So I, I, that's my opinion. Yeah, Brock, I don't know if you have any uh, say on the free, when free agency should hit for 
a rookie per se. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the correct terminology. Not really, but kind of like what you said, I'm pretty pro player. So, I mean, if there's any way to possibly cut down any time that it would take for a player to potentially hit free agency, I think that that would be for the better. And I'm assuming that the uh, MLB PA will probably fight fairly hard for that but i don't think it's gonna be like a um like a end-all be-all type issue if that makes sense like they're not they're not gonna take it all the way to the end for that but they're definitely gonna fight for it if that makes sense yeah and uh, we've mentioned a lot on this show uh that there's a lot wrong with baseball right now when you look at it as a, in a whole like when you start breaking it down more and more there is a lot wrong with baseball um and it's unfortunate like that when you know the background of baseball, like when you start understanding the background of baseball a little bit more, you start seeing more and more things where it's like, man, that's really messed up. You know, <laughs> I think that's like it with anything though. Um, when like, it looks good on the outside, it looks good on paper, but then once you start digging around, it's like, hmm, well, I don't know if that necessarily agree with that. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Like there's just a lot of things wrong and it feels like that's kind of the way it is with baseball right now. And that's why there's not, I feel like not a lot of optimism right now. Um, there needs to be a lot of steps taken in the right direction. And, and I'm hoping that some of these might click, but it feels like a lot of these are just not a lot's going to get done. Like the players want so much and the owners don't want to give that much, but the owners don't want to give anything. So, yeah. But the owners want a lot too, you know, like, but then the players don't want to give up. Like that's, that's, I mean, I guess that's why we're here right now. Right. You got to give a little to get a little. <laughs> exactly. Exactly that. So um, another thing that was mentioned and it looks like, I think all this stuff was mentioned by either Jeff Basson or, or uh, John Heyman. Um, sure, wasn't Nightingale? Probably, I mean, maybe. I don't know. All I saw was all I saw. Sorry, was, sorry, not funny. No, I know. All I saw was Passan and Heyman. Um, another thing that Passan mentioned was funneling additional money to all players with two plus years of service. Um, Wait, again, say that one more time. Funneling additional money to all players with two plus years of service. Mm-hmm. So guys that I would assume already have. I would assume this only applies to the players that have not hit free agency yet. So that arbitration features, eligible guys, yeah, ARB guys is, is that mm-hmm. big thing. Cause I think after two years of eligibility, you hit ARB, correct? Uh, unless you're a super two. Yes. Yes. So you basically they're talking and I don't know if this is right or not, but it sounds like you kind of, you know, take away arbitration in a sense. Not really. I don't think, I think there's still going to be arbitration there. Um, but I think that you basically give more money to those ARB guys, which I'm not a huge fan of arbitration because they look at just such old school stats. Like you look at a reliever and the relievers don't get paid them paid a lot of money anyways, but it's based on close on saves. It's based on ERA. It's based on wins and losses. And it's like, that's not stuff that we really look at anymore, which is, which is tough for me. So um, I think, yeah, I, I I'm with the, I mean, you gotta be pro pay those players more you know there's so many guys that just you know it's 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 tough for them so and with the minor leaguers too i think minor leaguers 100% need to get paid more i don't think that's going to get done here by any means it can't yeah i would say i don't think it can i don't think it nope. will um, it's not allowed to um another thing that jeff passan mentioned was uh, award draft picks to teams that don't manipulate service so basically don't give that seventh year to guys like if they bring them up appropriately uh like you don't have that chris bryant rule you don't have that seventh year um teams will get an extra draft pick Only, i don't know kind of kind of that's what it sounds like to me so what your interpretation this is what i'm reading from uh Passan. it says if a play if a team which this is gonna get a little interesting too because it says if a team has a top 100 prospect who finishes in the top five in the rookie or in the MVP Cy Young or rookie of the year, that person, uh, the team would receive a bonus draft pick. So they're hoping that if you start them from the beginning of the year, they're more likely to win a rookie of the year or finish in the top five or, or an MVP or Cy Young, whatever it is, because they'll, they'll go, they'll have more stats to back it up. Um, so if you fin, if you play basically the whole year and you're a top 100 prospect, your team will be allotted an extra draft pick. But the other thing that's interesting is what draft will it be to? Because that's something that I know we'll get into in a minute, but they are talking about putting a a draft in for um, 
international international player so would it be an international draft pick or will it be a uh, u.s draft pick don't know yeah that's true and uh, dude the international thing is i think that's something that has been mentioned a lot in the past and i'm i'm all for it's very helpful i think so i think so too i know that the the kids probably won't like it very much um but it's something that i think is needed 100 percent. i mean there are it balances teams, out baseball for it sure. Balance, it, it it really does. It really does, which is big. Um, I I'm um I'm weary about how do you how do you what what draft not what draft but what um what top prospects list are you picking from because that gets manipulated a lot already. I'm gonna it's let prob- you know that right. It, it'll probably be the MLB.com because that's probably the one that they're going to base it off of because that's kind of theirs. It's not the fan graphs and, and things like that. That that stuff gets manipulated a lot. Depending on who you talk to in the organization, I, I'll tell you this firsthand. Depending on who you talk to, that stuff gets manipulated a lot. I mean, you can put you can put a guy on there that you might not have never heard has ever heard of, you know. And it's like, well, where did this guy come from? How how is he all, all of a sudden in the top, you know? But he has to be a 20. top one hundred guy. He can't just yeah. be in the. You know what I'm saying though, right? Yeah. Like, but, you know, but typically, why? if you're in the top 100, you're, you're typically supposed to be pretty good. You're not manipulating it. The manipulation comes from a guy who's, you know, 20 to, to 8 or something like that or, or 15 to 5 who's probably not in the top 100. But yeah. pushing him up that list to say, hey, he's one of our top prospects. You should really trade for this guy, even though he might not be good. Yeah. I mean, that's I, I see that a lot. I'm not going to lie. I mean, depending on who you talk to, too. You know, you go look on fan graphs and you look at the Angels' top prospect list. There's guys on there. It's like, why is this guy on here? You He's know? up there. <laughs> why is he up there? Yeah, exactly. Like, and nothing against those players, but it just is like, why? You know, so I'm, um, I'm weary about that because, like, what it, who, who says who's a top 100 prospect in a sense? You know, like, you, you got – there are guys that it's, like, consensus. You know, like, these guys are for sure there. But, like, you know, who, who makes, like – at one point I was I, – last year 2019 i was like jordan adams has a chance to be a top 100 prospect and he was probably sitting in that 100 you know to 150 range you know like who who you know, errol vera right now like errol vera possibly a top 100 guy a top 100 guy to some guys you know but not mlb.com so he's also he's also a kid too though yeah, so I mean, like i mean you're, you're yeah you're hoping that that guy's 20 years old when he's a top 100 prospect and calling him up so i i think that'll be the other thing too is maybe that the prospect list will, will change a little bit where it's starting to reward guys who are higher in the system because right now you're seeing guys get drafted and they're already the top prospect in their org and it's like dude hasn't played a freaking game how do we know he's the best player in their org just yeah. because we took him the first round like I, i'm sure he's really good but that doesn't mean he's better than everyone else in this org I'm just saying, like, you, you start looking at different places that do it, Baseball America, Fangraphs, MLB Pipeline. I mean, there are certain things where you can start picking up. It's like, how do they rank these players? You know, Fangraphs might rank them as a, you know, like, future, like how good these guys are in the future. Mm-hmm. MLB Pipeline is, you know, uh, in, in a sense, more of a money base when you look at it. You know, like, Sam Bachman went straight up to number two and has pitched in three games. Like, granted – you know, that it, it's Sam Bachman. He was a first rounder and, and you have to put him up there, but you guys, you kind of get what I'm saying there. And, and Brock, I know that you haven't said anything in a minute or two. I don't know if you have any input or if you're just sitting back and, and listening to this whole conversation, just trying to take it in. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, one other thing, and I don't know if it says it in the article or not. Um, I'm assuming you're looking at the article it says um, tweaks <laughs> to propose draft um, draft lottery. Yeah. You, is that just more money to kids? Is that less money? What it, what nope. is, um, so there actually will be a lottery. So if you are in the bottom three of the MLB in record, you will go into a lottery and not the worst team in baseball will be the number one pick. Um, I, I think it should be a little higher than that. I think 10 is that number, honestly, but you know, if, if three's the, the reason, why, the, the reason why I'm not happy with three is because you already have three teams in the MLB who are tanking right now. I mean, you can already look at it and say, um, Baltimore's tanking, Pittsburgh's tanking, and you could argue Arizona was tanking last year or Colorado, Colorado was. Yeah, like you could argue that there are already five plus teams tanking. Texas. Um, yeah, Texas was tanking, and obviously now they're not. But so 
I think if that number's 10, that then we're in some business that then you're starting to look a little bit like the NBA where it's like, Hey, you can't tank because you're not guaranteed one. You could have the worst record and finish with the 10th pick. And now all of a sudden you sucked and you're really bad and you're not really getting rewarded for being that bad. So um, that's what that one looks like. And then also something that I mentioned kind of super two would be no more. That was kind of what it was talking about. So the elimination of the super two, um, the That's international the draft. If, if there's one thing that comes out of this, Super 2 needs to go. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one yeah. thing. Like, That's the one thing that like, if the players, the players need to advocate for. Yeah. So, 100%. Uh, expanded playoffs, 14 teams reaching the playoffs, and then DH in both the American and National League. I'm all for it. I think that is – and I'm, I think I've been saying this for a long time. In order to expand baseball, I think you need to be able to have an American League and National League need to have a DH. I'm a huge, huge history guy. I love that the National League still has the pitcher hitting, but I, I think it makes it a lot easier on everyone. It helps free agency because you have guys like Nelson Cruz who can now sign with 30 teams compared to 15 teams, and it makes it a lot easier to bring in um, an extra two teams and say, okay, now we'll just – we can move Colorado to the American league. We can, you know, whatever. It, it makes it a lot easier for everyone if everyone's playing with the same rules. So, but yeah. hundred um, percent. Brock, I don't know. I, I saw you agreeing there. Um, are you a fan of the, the, the DH? Or are you a traditionalist? I don't know how you feel about that. I feel like I'm in for DH. I'm a hundred percent pro, but in general, I feel like I'm halfway traditionalist, halfway more modernized, but with DH to me, it just, I, I was talking to a friend about it yesterday and I said, think about if in the, in the NFC, they could have one less wide receiver than the AFC. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's stupid to me. And then I don't know. I've just, I've never been a fan pitchers hitting. There's just no point. It's just basically a free pass 95 or 98% of the time. It opens them up for more injuries. Like we're okay with Otani being at the plate because of what Otani can do. But if I were a Mets fan and Scherzer was up at the plate, like I don't even want the risk of him getting hit in the hand from a slip pitch and him be out for the season for what? For him to literally ground out to short nine times out of 10 or yeah. bunt somebody over. Like it's stupid. It's literally, it's not worth it. There's no point to it. And it just, I'm not like the huge, like everything needs to be equal guy. But at the same time, like there are, I things. think there are certain things that I think this only makes sense to make it across the board, all 30 teams. And it doesn't even make sense because they don't start hitting until double a, like Jack Flaherty. Yeah. Jack Flaherty. I played against Jack Flaherty in high school and that dude raked dude raked. He threw, he was throwing absolute gas. He was most, their shortstop. Pitchers do rake. Yeah. So when, when you're waiting three years before you hit again, like it's, Baseball is not one of those sports where it's like, oh, yeah, I haven't played in five years. Let me go figure out how to hit 95 with a stupid slider. Like, come on, guys. If you want these guys to hit, let them hit from the day they get drafted. Um, and, and, I mean, you look at Hunter Green, he could have been a two-way guy too. They were talking about him being a shortstop and not even a pitcher. So that's the biggest thing with that. If you're going to let these guys hit, let them hit from day one. Don't let them hit freaking three years into their career. 100%, 100%. And uh, Brock, I know you wanted to bring up uh, the postseason a little bit, and that's something that seems like is going to get corrected in a sense. I don't know if corrected is the right word, but definitely needs uh, definitely needs something. So I don't know if you have anything, what your two cents is on, on postseason, Brock. Yeah, I was actually just talking with my friend yesterday about this as well. And it's funny because a lot of the things that were brought up on Twitter were things that I brought up to him yesterday about amount of years to hit free agency, universal DH, um, draft picks and all those kind of things. But this was the big one for me is I kind of broke down. I looked up the NFL playoff format for this year. And then I looked up last year's MLB standings. And essentially if we had the same exact system as the NFL last year, the other two teams that would have made the playoffs would have been, I believe the blue Jays and the Mariners in the American league and the national league would have been the Phillies and the reds. Um, and essentially the giants would have gotten a buy and the, uh, Oh my gosh. Yankees or Astros. 
I think it was the Astros. I think the Astros would have gotten a buy in the American League, and the Yankees had to play the playing game against the Red Sox. Yeah, they were wild card. They were Um, wild card. Um, I think it was the Astros. I believe. I think they won like 104 or something. Yeah, because the Red Sox, the Red Sox had to play the Astros in the first. Yeah. So, anyways, Astros would have got a buy, and the Giants would have got a buy, and essentially it would have Rays. Rays would have got a buy. Oh, the Rays. That's right. Rays had 100. Got check us there. Thank got you. you. I, I got you. Okay, so Rays, Giants would have got to buy. And the way the football works is there's three different wild card weekend, right? So it's three wild card series. So essentially it would have been, you know, the Giants and Rays would have gotten basically a week off, essentially. And all the other three teams or three series, so six other teams would have played in three different series. And then the lowest seed out of those winners would have played the Giants or Rays. And then the other winners would have played each other and then so on. So I know that a little piece of news that came out was seven teams per league. And honestly, I don't know how they would exactly go about it if they weren't to go about it that way. Um, Just because the way that obviously it's, it's not even teams. So there's an odd man out. So if you have an odd man out, then there's not really a choice then to do a buy if that makes sense. Cause if it was eight teams, you could just do four series and just move it on up the bracket. But if you got seven, you have an odd man out. So that was the proposal that I saw. Um, I don't remember who tweeted it, but they said it was supposed to be seven teams a league. What would Um, you, what would you do though? Would you have, that's what it was. Would you have one game series or would you have these be three game series? I would be, I would do three. So it'd be three, five, seven, just like normal. It would be three, five, seven, seven. So three in the wild card, five division, seven championships, seven World Series. Um, and essentially, you know, say how, how how much of a break do they normally have from like last day of season until playoffs start? The wild card game is usually on Tuesday and then the first game is usually Friday. So if they played Tuesday, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then the first game is Friday, what that would be double, a big dis- What if you went double header one game? I know the players wouldn't agree to this. But how oh sick no that way! Be? How sick that would be? Pretty nuts, but they would never, they would never agree to that. But You're playing, so, are you playing seven innings in a postseason game? No, 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 no. You go two nines, oh. two nines that day. So, so we're going to change. Never happen. The players would never let it happen. But it would be that would be a sick day. Like you so, have, I'm saying last game of season to first wild card game. How many days is that usually? Like three or four? One. Three. The one to oh, so wild cards one yes yeah you get monday off and yeah. then one team plays on tuesday one one league plays on tuesday the other league plays on wednesday and you would just be able to play both games on tuesday wednesday thursday and then first game would be saturday so then technically speaking say the giants finish last game of the season dodgers and so and so play you know all the other teams play that wild card series and say they start on tuesday then the earliest the Giants or Rays would play would be Friday would be the earliest or would they get an off day? The other you, team. You would have to give them a travel day because okay. they're going to have to go to San Francisco. So, so Saturday. That, yeah. So Saturday would be earliest and, and Tuesday would be latest. So the buy team would could potentially get five to eight days off. Which I think in comparison only, to the other guys. It should only be Saturday. Yeah. Saturday should be the longest that they should get because if it's a well, best Tuesday, of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Best of three, right? Best of three. Oh, best of three. Why am I thinking so it should five? Be, so you just make sure that the Giants and the Rays would play Saturday, and then you could say, okay, the next – like, so to, to use this for example, let's say the, the Yankees moved on, the, the Astros moved on, the Rays were there, the – uh, White Sox were there, right? So they would play on Saturday, Sunday. And you would just say that the number one seed would get to play Saturday and then the, the number two seed would get to play Sunday and just keep going from there. But I think that it should go to seven. I think it should go three, seven, seven, seven. So you're trying to get division to seven now, no five. Yeah, I, I think that that would make things a little bit more – um, difficult for the wild card teams because now you're playing a best of three and a best of seven, and it's going to really run that pitching thin. And I, I think you should be rewarded for not having to play in that game. I, I really do because right now you're the biggest thing that you're doing is you're moving your ace to 
uh, what he's pitching game two now instead of game one in this scenario. Mm-hmm. So if you move it to seven and you're moving your, your ace to game two, yes, he's going to get to pitch twice, but my ace might get to pitch three times. And, and you're just going to really wear that, that bullpen thin. And I think that's been the biggest problem is you have teams just overusing their pen in the playoffs. And it's like, well, if you have to play seven games and then another seven and then another seven to win the World Series, that's a lot of pitching you got to use. Yeah. Plus, I mean, most of the better teams, they their number two is usually – damn near close to as good as their number one on some of the better teams so yeah. in reality what is that even pitching your ace in game two like you know yeah. what i mean so oh now i gotta pitch scherzer instead of Degrom. oh no yeah. or, or vice know? versa like darn yeah. it like who cares like either way you're screwed it doesn't even matter yeah i'm a, I'm a big fan of uh momentum going into the playoffs However, uh, I, I just feel like I got to kind of bring that up too. like 2019 nationals, dude, a hundred percent. Like you look at, you, you look at um, some of these guys that come in, they, they come in hot, you know, the Braves and, this last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, the Braves last year, they came in hot, like the hottest. Well, they went 88 the games. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, they came in hot though. Like they were the hottest team in the second half. They were the best team yeah. in the second half of baseball. They were. They were. Uh, and that, that's a big thing for the postseason, though. So I don't know if taking days off is what players want. As weird as that sounds like, and I, I don't, we don't need to have a discussion about this, but it's, it's weird thinking about that because a lot of guys just want to go, 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 I feel like. Like Max Scherzer is one of those guys. I think he had that issue in the postseason last year, and that's why he couldn't pitch was because he was on short rest, and then they went too long of rest with him. And then he was like sore or something like something weird I, like that. I, I think the issue with Max was he was on pitch count when he got to the Dodgers. They were only letting him go. Uh, they weren't letting him go full throttle. It was, hey, we're saving you because we know we're going to use you in the postseason. We're going to run you until you can't go anymore. And, I, and then he got to the postseason. It was like, hey, I went from throwing 95, 97 pitches and, you know, six shutout innings to now you're asking me to go eight, eight nine innings and throw 115 pitches. And I have to go on three days rest after that. Like, that doesn't make any sense. So, um but I, I think that if you go three-game series, it's not that big of a deal. It's only one extra day for the American League and National League team to wait. And, yes, I do believe that, that it is a big deal, the, the momentum. But I think if you give it a seven-game series instead of a five-game series, you, you take out that luck of, you know, if it gets to, yeah, one game, you know. Or even, three, or even a five-game series, too. Like, that's, that's – you get kind of lucky. You know, you play – yeah you win one game – you win the first game, and it's like – all, all you, of a sudden, there's your you win one. You win one road game as the underdog, mm-hmm. and it gets really, really hard for the favorite to go back down, or tied 1-1, one, one, even though they were expecting to be up 2-0. So I think if it's seven, it gives that, that, uh, the favorite a little bit more of, a, an, of an advantage. Definitely. And that's the cool thing with baseball. Anything happens in baseball. I mean, I think we all know that. That's like the number one rule of baseball. Anything can happen. <laughs> so, and then last thing on the draft um, lottery, I wanted to mention this. Um, do 10 teams, 100%, and make it a show. Make it a show. Yeah, yeah. Why not? That's what – NBA does it. The hockey does it. Like, everybody make – you make it into a show now. Yeah. You, know, you got an hour of uh, – you got an hour – Rob Manfred has an hour to do what he wants, you know. He can pick the do ball it. out of the hat, so – I think do it right of, before a playoff game too, or something like make it, Hey, playoffs are starting at, at five o'clock today. Like make, make sure that's from, from three fifty to four fifty or something like that, or three to four o'clock. And then four o'clock to five o'clock is the, uh, the pregame show or something, but yeah, make it a big deal. That's what MLB has done a good job of lately is that remember they were supposed to do the draft. I think in, were they supposed to do the draft in, in where were they supposed, to, supposed to be in Omaha? In Omaha. Like that's cool. And, like that's pretty and then awesome they had to like award those guys during that time. And then they had to move it. They were going to move it to Atlanta, and then that whole thing happened. Um, so, yeah, that was the big deal is that they were going to have it in Omaha for all the guys who were in the College World Series, which was awesome. Yeah, that's cool to see that. So, Oh, you know, another thing I just remembered, too, that I saw on Twitter about it was um, – I don't know if this was in the proposal or if I just saw this before today. I do not recall. Um, and it could be fake news, but I saw something that said – that MLB was in talks so you know take that for what you will but in talks with Apple about broadcasting games on Apple Plus have you guys seen that wouldn't surprise not that would would, but that that would would be pretty that would make sense with YouTube and all that that would make sense I like the YouTube YouTube games were kind of cool last year yeah they were 100% and it's like um it's just because I don't have cable so 
I got to figure out creative ways to watch the game. And obviously if you live in SoCal, you're blacked out. Blackouts <laughs> are probably the worst thing for young baseball fans, because obviously unless they can get mommy and daddy to pay $75 for a streaming service a month on top of, you know, cable. And if their cable doesn't have the provider, you know, the right provider for your team, then you're kind of screwed. So then yeah. you're paying for cable plus you're paying for a streaming service because your cable doesn't have the team that you want to watch. It's ridiculous. I'm shocked that that's not being talked about at least a little bit. Like, Hey, can we get rid of this stupid uh, blackout thing? I think the NFL has a, a rule. And again, going back to the NFL, cause they do a pretty, pretty good job with this. Um, there's a, a rule on how, or they used to have a rule on how many people had to be at the stadium for the game to be shown on uh, for everyone. So you didn't just have everyone staying at home and not going to the game. Um, like, yeah, the, I feel like it's a little different with baseball though, because how many times do you look like Tampa, like you'd never see a Tampa game <laughs> in, in Tampa though. So like, it's only for the, wherever you're located. So if the angels didn't have, you know, 15,000 people, then we, we couldn't watch an angel game in Anaheim, which I mean, you want the people at the game. So that that's kind of the point of it. I feel like they should definitely close, like close the ring a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, they have it. Like, I feel like the ring is so big. Like I've been in Arizona or Utah to try to watch the angels games. And I still could, I was still blacked out. And I'm like, I'm in a totally different state. Yeah. Like it's like a whole region. Iowa. I think it is. Iowa has like 15 different teams that they can't watch. If you look and they don't have a, a team in Iowa. And I think there's like 10 teams or 15 teams that they can't watch. Don't quote me on that. I don't know the exact number. So sorry. Dude, hundred percent. If, if, if they said playing out, you pay $40 a month on Apple plus or whatever for MLB, just that's what it is, but you can watch any game, no matter where it is, what teams are playing. I would a hundred percent pay for that. hundred percent. I, uh, I do it with minor leagues. I watch every minor league game. I mean, I, I love minor leagues, but, you know, I think that's a great idea. I, I definitely think that there needs to be some type of streaming thing done differently. Um, I don't know how to fix that. I, I, it's, honestly, it's kind of beyond me. I've never even thought about it. There's definitely, you know, good ways to do it. Um, I just don't know. Um, but I like the ideas you guys are throwing out there. So on- Six teams in Iowa are blacked out, and there's not a team in Iowa. So, brutal. Yeah. So. And I don't even think that would be a part. That's not even a part of the the CBA. That would have to be with, you know, TV providers. And I don't think that would have anything to do with the CBA, would it? I think it would because they get some money from uh, TV. It, they get money. Like, that's why they're talking about postseason stuff, because they get part of the postseason earnings. Mm. So so they probably get part of the TV earnings. Like viewership well. revenue? Yes. I like that. So. Brock, you brought this next thing to our attention. Um, kind of, let's play a little game with this, I'd say. Um, and I guess Brock, since you brought it up, you get to start. I'm, we're gonna put. I'm gonna put you on the spot here. We need God. one guy who you think is gonna sign with the Angels. It can be whoever you want. Like if you want to pay Carlos Rodon, that's fine. But one guy who you think is gonna sign with the Angels that's still a free agent. And I want you to predict one other player of where they are gonna go. Um, if you don't have it, I don't have it either. I think Nate might have it. Um, so we can probably start with Nate, I think. We're talking with, we're starting with Brock. <laughs> um, I, dude, I honestly, I don't know if I have a realistic person that the angels sign. Like, honestly, I, 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 I have people that I would want them to sign. You know, I had brought up Kenley Jansen last podcast, but I don't. I don't think they're going to do that just because of how he would fit into our roster. I think if they throw the ball 60 feet, six inches, it's realistic. <laughs> yeah. Like, what does yeah. that sound it's like? I could see Kenley Jansen. So if you give me a pitcher, I'd be like, that makes sense. Like logically that makes sense. If it's, if it's a pitcher with a weird arm angle too, like that you don't, that the angels don't have, like angels don't have a guy that throws a cutter, you know, like, like Kenley and right. Harry likes that. So I could totally see it. Like I, I could, I, I could see us signing Rodon. I could see us signing Tyler Anderson. I could see us signing Danny Duffy. I could see us signing pretty much kind of like you said, um, really anybody. It makes sense. Um, anybody that is a pitcher. I, I don't, 
I don't think we're going to be signing a shortstop. And if we do, I truly don't know who it would be. Just purely looking at the list of free agents here of shortstops, I'm just like, I truly don't think we're getting Correa or Trevor Story. And we've already had Andrelton Simmons and Jose Iglesias before, and I don't think we're going to get either one of those. Um, I have no idea who they would go for for a shortstop. I could see them maybe signing like a utility guy that might be second base and shortstop, who that would be. Once again, I have no idea. Um, I've, but, gone back, I've gone back and forth on that too. I think the better tr- better options in the trade market rather than spend I, I agree. 30 million a year on Korea. But, but I think – Another team or another person that I think would go, I think, I think Trevor Story is going to sign with the Yankees. I like that. Um, Just because, you know, the Yankees are usually in on almost everybody and they missed out on Seager. Um, I don't see them landing Correa. My only confliction here is that I, if Correa doesn't go to the Yankees, I don't know who Correa goes to because everyone was saying Tigers because of the Hinch connection, obviously, but they got Baez. So that's kind of the pickle I'm in is I'm like, well, I don't think we're getting Story or, or, or Correa. The Mets aren't going after either one. Um, at least I don't think they are. And I think the Yankees will end up with one of them. Who gets the other? I think, you know, I'm going to say this. I'm going to switch it up a little bit just because I kind of went down this trail i'm gonna say i'm gonna say correa goes to the yankees and i'm gonna say trevor story goes to the cardinals and we're gonna sign carlos rodon that's my three i like it i don't don't think any three of those are gonna happen the way i said they will but and and trade for paul de young there you go i'll I'll finish that full circle since paul de young is technically the cardinal shortstop and angels need a shortstop if you're gonna go if the cardinals are gonna sign a shortstop there you go paul de young so yeah full circle full circle makes sense nate Give don't sleep on the don't sleep on the Dodgers. They they love to throw around money. I could easily see them just saying, "Screw you guys, we're going to go sign Trevor Story, Carlos Correa." And I know they hate Carlos Correa, but that would just be the irony of Major League Baseball, them signing Carlos Correa. Um, <laughs> no way. <laughs> I know it's no way, but just the Dodgers really don't care if they can win a, a real World Series. I don't think they care who it is. Well, they don't um, have Joe Kelly anymore, do they? He's like the biggest. No. Dude. They let him go. Yeah. So for, for me, Matthew Boyd's the, the guy that I think the Angels could sign. Um, I, I, think so I, took Jared, I think I took Jared. <laughs> pause real quick. Hold on. Because I was looking at Matt Boyd. I looked at his name multiple times. Okay. So he's been on, he's on multiple lists, but if you click on his name, it doesn't say he's a free agent until 2023. No, he, get, he got cut. He got cut. Oh, like, he got cut. I didn't yes. know that. So uh, his websites need to get on it. He was going to get uh, non-tendered, but they cut him before the non-tender deadline because yeah, it was it. just easier that for That was going to be my answer. I, I saw Jared's smile too, so I was like, ooh, I might have taken Jared's, which is kind of nice. I was just happy that you guys picked pitchers because I'm not going to do a pitcher. We wanted a trade for him. I'm, I'm, yeah. very, I'm very upset my guy, uh, who I've been saying all offseason, I liked for the Angels, Freddie Galvis signed to go play in Japan. That, that was kind of disappointing for me, but – um, you know, I'm, I'm going to really upset Jared here because it's, it's fun to Kershaw to the Dodgers. Uh, I'm breaking, you know, everyone's going to be so shocked by that one. That's not even good because it's a 50-50 <laughs> chance. He's either going to Texas or he's going to the Dodgers. Like there's, well, it's... well I, I think he's going back to the Dodgers. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and then if I had to pick one more, I'm going to go the, the kid outfielder Suzuki. He's going to sign with the Giants. I like it. I'm with it. I'm going to go a completely opposite route here, guys. I'm going to go with catcher. I think the Angels Angels are going to sign a catcher. I, I thought think. about Chirinos. That was one of the guys I was thinking. Chirinos makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> the first guy that came that I looked at, and I was like, I've always kind of wanted him, Luke Molly. Luke M- Mele, I think, uh, Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I know he played for the Blue Jays. I, I, I've always liked him, the good defensive catcher. And that's something I think the Angels have lacked on a second half basis i think max dassey is a fantastic catcher um but nate as you mentioned i'm in full agreement with you after hip surgery it's tough to catch 162 games so if you get 90 games out of max dassey you got to get uh, what's my math on this 72 72 games from somebody else and um i like i like kurt suzuki i think he's a great clubhouse guy but i'd prefer not to see a kurt suzuki type you know 
guy again where it's like Mm -mm. it's tough to watch him actually catch a ball like at some point at one point he was a good catcher he really was I liked him defensively but it it was tough to watch him out there sometimes catch Shohei Otani especially you know like that that was tough and I think that's I think that's kind of what you got to accommodate to when you're looking at a catcher is a good defensive catcher for Shohei Otani you know like that's that in my opinion is the biggest thing so I mean Luke Molly um Robinson Chirinos makes a lot of sense. Veteran guy back there. Wilson Ramos was another guy. I'm like, veteran presence. Like, you can pick – honestly, you can throw any catcher out there right now. Um, chances Ramos, to- Ramos coming off torn ACL. Don't forget that. What about Sandy Leon? San, uh, didn't Sandy Leon sign already? Yeah, he signed with the Indians already. That was a guy that I think we put um, in our preseason predi- prediction was Sandy Leon. I was like, yep. you know, a lot of sense defensively. Uh, Chance Sisko is a guy that hasn't been great, but, again – you get him in a decent situation with a good catching coach. Um, you know, a second chance. He was a top prospect for the Orioles at one point. So it makes a lot of sense. But yeah, there's some interesting catchers back um, on this like second half in a sense, or like the back half that make, you know, for me, a lot of sense. And um, for me, I'm going to stick with that shortstop. I know, you know, we we're kind of going similar here, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Carlos Correa goes to the, to the Mariners. Don't know why, but I just, that's, that's going to be where, I think he goes at this point in time. Could totally be wrong. Could go to the Cubs. For some reason, I saw it. They signed Robbie Ray, right? Yeah. Yeah. Huge fan of that signing. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. 100%. Uh, And the the Rangers got John Gray, correct? Yep. Yeah. I I would have wanted John Gray. Actually a huge fan of the John Gray signing. The only reason I like the Robbie Ray signing is because that means we're going to get to hit Robbie Ray all over the park for, you know, hopefully five starts a year. (laughs) So – and again, the Angels have had problems with left-handed uh, pitching in the past, but um, final I thing. Lo- I would have liked Eduardo Escobar. Interesting. Yeah. He's good. Um, final thing before we get let everybody go, um, congratulations to Patrick O'Neill, uh, yes. new Angels play-by-play guy. Um, congratulations out there to him. That's awesome. Huge. Fantastic. I'm excited to hear him. Um, I know he's done a lot. I, I'd love to see Trent Rush get some time. I know he does more radio. And I think Trent does a great job radio wise. Um, but patio is great. Um, I'm excited to listen to him. I think that he does a fantastic job of the stat side of things though. I am going to miss both Sutton and Waltz. I thought they did a good job of like that minor league side of things. And that's, I love that. I think that's cool. Like I think um, Sutton did a great job of doing the college side of things. And, like he would tell you like, Oh, he came from this organization and I know this head coach and he, like did this, this, this in college. And it like, it was like, Whoa, this is different, but I like it a lot. You know, it's cool to hear that side of things. It's kind of like that. Um, Vince Scully. Like I know that I just compared Don- or Sutton to Vince Scully and that's not fair, but like you're Vince cut, Scully, you're like, done. Vince Scully would give those good, like random stories. And I thought it was a lot of fun. So got to tip the cap, tip the cap to patio there. Um, it's gonna be pretty cool to listen to him. So guys, any final thoughts before I let everybody go? I'll start with you, Brock. Uh, just a final question. It's a short one. Do we, are we all on the same page that Freeman's going back to the Braves? No, no, no. I could see him in a Yankee uniform. Um, have a, have a friend who knows him really, really well. And he would love to be back with Atlanta, but he wants that extra year. And I think the Yankees are going to give it to him. I think, yeah, I think, uh, I think um, Atlanta low balls a lot is weird as that sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, When you look at it, I don't know who's bringing Nate. I don't know if you brought that up to me or if somebody else brought it up to me. But you look at what um, the the past history with Atlanta, and they've not, you know, given a lot of big contracts. They've given big contracts to young guys like Ronald Acuna. I think got a good, like a decent contract. I think uh, I'll be got an okay one. Yeah. Well, I mean, for that age, for for signing it at twenty or twenty one, yeah. you know, they got like six for eighty eight. Uh, probably not even six for eighty eight. Six or fifty four or something like so that. Like, my only question is: is obviously Freeman is a hell of a lot better player than Anthony Rizzo or Luke Voigt. But obviously, like you're not going to platoon. Rizzo's a free agent too, though. Is he? Yes. That was so his that, walk year. Yeah. So that. So what are they going to do with Voigt, DH, and have to put? I, I think. He, and... I think. I think Voigt gets moved. I, I really do. I think he gets moved okay. to uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee would be an interesting team that they, they could use someone like that. I'm say Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota possibly. Okay um Colorado maybe even I don't know there's a bunch of teams that could use his services especially with the first baseman market interesting um I'm slightly thing, worried about Walsh slightly the the slightly. one last thing I want to add with with Atlanta 
they are already $9 million over their previous high for um, payroll. So they're at 140. Their previous high was last year at 131. So that would put them about $40 million ish, 30. $35 million over their previous high, which I don't know if ownership's going to want to do that. That's a lot of money, but I, I see the Yankees going whatever they need to do to go win a world series. And if Freddie Freeman does that for them, they will do it. Yeah. On a Freddie Freeman front though, like Freddie Freeman, Chipper Jones, you know, John, and not that John Smoltz was there his whole career, like Greg, uh, Tom Glavin, Greg Maddox, those guys who were there for a long time they all get put in the same category, you know, and I think Freddie Freeman deserves to be in that category is one of those guys that needs to be there for a long time in a, in a historic franchise. So Nate, any final thoughts? No, I just really would like this CBA to get figured out, you know, like let's stuff to talk about. Yeah. Let's, let's put a full offer out there and stop saying, I, I think you and I talked about this off the record. They keep saying like, Oh, we're going to give them some things to think about. Just give them everything to think about. And, figure out where you need to meet in the middle because this is getting ridiculous. This is, this could go on for forever of, Hey, we're going to give you three to five things to think about. And then we're going to give, you're going to decline two of the three of them or three of the five. And then you're going to come back with something. It's just going to take forever. Just give them a full offer. It was exciting before the lockdown though. All the stuff that was happening, that was like the most exciting. It was sick. It's, it, it was most exciting. It has been in a long time, but then when it got locked out, I was like, damn, it's going to be boring for a long time. <laughs> Definitely. That's what we're seeing right now. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll answer your, your, your comment here, Brock, on Jared Walsh. Um, I'd love to see him platoon. I'd love to see him just hit righties. for what about Luke Voigt, dude? Luke Voigt? Jared Walsh? Cheap. That's, cheap. Like a, that's like a younger Mark Trumbo, bro. I, th- I think Voigt's too good for that, though, if that makes sense. Like, I would rather see Voigt play 120 games. I don't know, bro. He was on my fantasy team last year, and he was a hell of a disappointment. Oh, well, yeah, but – I get it. Yeah, I know if he's cheap, 100%, I'd platoon him, but I think the Angels have a laundry list of other things that they need before a first baseman. But I'm not against it. Like, if you could, I mean, I don't know who, Justin Upton, platoon him at first base. Like, I would take Upton over Voight. Just to, as stupid, as weird as that sounds, I take Justin up over over Voight just because he's hard. You don't have to give up anybody. I know I'm not saying, I'm not saying. I like that. I like that. that. This just in, Jared Tim said Justin Upton is better than Luke Voight. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, no. First, congratulations. All right, guys. I I didn't interpret it like that, Jared. I didn't interpret it like that, Jared. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to this podcast here at Talking Halos. Making us the best podcast out there. I really do appreciate it. Uh, If you could subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening or watching it, if you're watching us on YouTube, hello, um, or goodbye, actually. Um, Don't forget to follow us on all our social medias, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Just look up Talking Halos. You can find us there. Um, Leave us a review. You know, let us know how we're doing. We'll try to be better on the stats um, for our stat guy that said that we don't do good on stats. That's fine. You know, we'll throw out more stats for you. and follow us, follow us on, uh, on, on Twitter as well. You can follow myself at Jared underscore Tim's. You can follow Nate, Nate Green 34 and Brock at BDROX8. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day.